Morning, morning. How are we doing? All right, just looking at the NQs then. I think we've got uh, I think everyone's out in New York uh, this or today. So we'll be filling in where we can. Okay. So just try and organize this around here a bit. Okay, <clears throat> so what we have today, I need to move these over a little bit. Check, yep, okay. All right, so what have we got on the NQ so far? So the NQ today, we had a push-up yesterday, a uh, big, big, nice push-up, had a timing bar around here at 3 o'clock. Um, that 3 o'clock bar actually, um, let's change over to New York time so we are all talking EST. So New York. Okay, so that was at 10 a.m. So we had a timing bar at 10 a.m. yesterday coming in that kind of pushed down and actually, yeah, maybe a bar or two ahead of what it was, but that was actually the push down into a buy side pool down here on the on the NQ. So just bringing that over, you can see we went from this low to this high. And we tapped into a buy side liquidity pool at the point of that timing bar. Actually, that's under 10 minutes. So this is a two hour timing bar. So any of this area here is actually the reversal. Okay, so any of this area is the reversal. So that's what we got. We hit that timing bar and then we pulled out of buy side liquidity that had already been tapped in once. Second time tap and then off we went to the races yesterday up to new highs. This was the sell side liquidity pool sitting up here from the whole big move of what was this? I think this was the FOMC. The drop from FOMC left a big liquidity pool sitting up there, which it had taken some days, but yesterday came back to get it. Uh, and that's where we are right now. So coming into what has happened in the overnight Globex session is uh, another shorter term. Not So this is not a two hour timing bar. <clears throat> this is kind of like a 10 minute timing bar. And this is when we got our last push down. So it's not necessarily, these bars are not necessarily a reversal point, although they can be, you know, it's high, high probability of, of reversal sometimes but also momentum coming into the market okay so that's what we had now we had a benchmark driven off the top here uh, i think we're driven off the top we had a benchmark down down below here um where is it off this first swing right so had this this minor let's get the close of this bar yeah so we had kind of pulls at the first benchmark which is this one let's change the colors on this Uh, GT must make them yellow. So yeah, so we had the yellow benchmark here. So it's benchmark one. We kind of paused at it, then dropped through with the uh, with the timing bars coming in, pushed back down to the momentum bars and to the VWAP as well. Uh, and also just had a generic level there on the NQ down here at uh, sixty five three sixty five. So we hit into that. We've now pushed off of that. So what we're going to do then is, is kind of see where the Globex session liquidity pool may reside at the moment. So taking this high to this low, we're bringing that across and we can see that thereabouts roughly we have a we can have a pullback to this level before we decide to do something else again. If we're looking at the bigger time frame, let's go up to the two hours and zoom out a little bit on two hour. 
So on a two hour, you can see, so here come those kind of timing bars that we get in. And you can see that that timing bar here on the two hour was a drop down into it and push off into it. So that was where that kind of came into play. Now, what we've been doing on the NQ is we've had this huge, uh, this huge, what's this one? Is that a daily? Let's just check what that one is. Okay, yes, yeah, so you've got a huge daily uptrend. Clearly, we know that we've been topping new highs. Now we've got this little channel here that we fell out of. So if I zoom in to this channel on the NQ, we was up in this channel for a long time, then going sideways in it. And then now we've just dropped out of it. And yesterday that push up retested the backside of it. Okay, so we've retested the backside of that chat that that channel that's been holding for uh, some time and then if we look at the two hourly we we that that grind across we was doing is we've been in this one up down up down and using it through fomc through non-farm you know through cpi we've all been like testing the bottom of that and then now we've got to the top of it again just poked above like i said went into that sell side liquidity pool and then coming off it so, you know, I don't normally like to like attempt a bias, but just the overall perspective here is, you know, we keep making these big drops on on news announcements and results and financial economic data, and then we push straight back up again. So right now, it just seems to be an accumulation phase. I don't think there is a decision like that we've got, apart from the fact that we've tested the backside of this channel we're in, so therefore we could drop. But how far, I don't know. Right now, it, right now it's just sideways. So if it keeps doing what it's been doing, then it suggests we're going to come down, perhaps to 225, and try and pick it up. So looking at the 10-minute, what we kind of got then today is... This liquidity pool held, so that's kind of done now. I don't really need to bring that forward anymore. The push up yesterday has given us a buy side liquidity pool that is quite wide now, but these are three levels, one, two, three. So that I just zone them all up, um, but you can literally tap into one, come off, tap into another one, come back and then tap into the third. They can accumulate down there. But in any case, it's kind of acting like a magnet, as should be the sell side liquidity pool as well. So that's driven from the Globex drop that we've seen overnight. So from this point A to B, uh, we just drew it in. From this point A to B, we should be coming up to 54 or 80. And that's kind of how it works. We've driven into a benchmark, like I said, from those highs. So we've tapped into that. So we'll see what we get. Um, I'm guessing what's being acknowledged at the moment is the last push. Yeah, so they've tried to push up out of that. So if they close above that, which they pretty much did, we get a clear close above. We're probably going to push up there to 455 on the NQ. Okay, so that's the NASDAQ. Now, what do we have? What do we have? Anything else? Anyone else on here? Okay. So that's the NASDAQ. Now, let's have a look at the small caps that have been running this morning now nxpl seems to be the one off the bat that has been running as was cnxa um, so nxpl went into a sell side liquidity pool jump on a higher time frame zoom out so yeah from this last move effectively from this last high to these lows we had a sell side liquidity pool sitting up here uh, that we pushed into currently at 68 right at the top we pushed above it come back down there's a benchmark sitting up here at 350 uh, yeah so that's literally predicted from these lows and formulized from those lows that we sh we could have a benchmark sitting up there at 350 but right in order to get there it has to get out of the sell side liquidity which is closed above it so realistically that liquidity has now been used question is whether we can keep above it now so we've we've used the buy sides look see the swing in from this morning there was one that we left standing on that big push and then the second push we utilize it all the way down so 
looking at NXPL, we pushed in to the first level. We then made a push for the second level, then the third level, double bottomed at the third level, and then worked our way out and then come back to it again. But ultimately, that would kind of been um, negated at the point that, like I said, we've used it here, right? So we, we leave it there and then we would draw another one coming in off that last low and to the high and then look for the next one. Now that one, I think we cracked. So we just cracked that. The moving average was there or we could argue we just utilized the previous one before. But never mind the next one that came in. The next one that came in was a big, big push into further into that sell side. So we tapped into the first level. We've gone straight past that first level. Um, and then we have pushed up. I've got some, let me just check, bring this across here. Feeling I'm in someone else's lobby. One sec. Yes, I am. Just bring this across. Close that down. All right. Okay, so NXPL, the last push up leaves us with a buy side liquidity pool sitting here. So if we push down to 231, there's a possibility of a buyer here in order to push up. Now look, the benchmark's up here at 340, 350. Um, we're gonna look at each push. So that's what I do here is I'm looking at each push. Where was, where's liquid vision gone? So we're looking at each push because this these liquidity pools are dynamic and they are formulated with each swing so we have a push here from the top from the low to the high of this particular push there will be a whole move that we've made the whole move from the very start to the very high there will be a liquidity pool lower right but we're trying to track the current ones so right now if we're looking at this we have the low of this swing to the high of this swing and we're looking for buy side liquidity that will be the first buy side liquidity and that's how this trade structure is going to be formed the price action is going to move so you can see now we have a gap between 248 and 232 in order to push aggressively higher this buy side liquidity should hold and we push up and potentially up there to 340. If this fails, we could grab down to 30, and that becomes another area that if we grind out of it with money flow, that we can grab that liquidity. Let me just uh, turn this off because the liquidity switch on is just about to occur, and it was just gonna start screaming. Okay. So, That's what we've uh, that's what we've got here on NXPL, right? So we have further to go on it. We'd look for some sort of potential rejection up at the 350s to see if there isn't some sort of short. Now I'm not a great advocate of shorting one first day first day pops, but I have something for specifically that I look for up at this level, and that pretty much will be will look like. If we get to a top and then get rejection, so if we was to push up here and then we get rejection here, then I'm gonna measure that rejection. I'm gonna measure that rejection, put that sell side liquidity in, and then if we come up and reject that as well, that's the one I look for to target the next buy side liquidity pool um, as T1. So there you go. That's what I'm looking at on NXPL, right? So at the moment, so you can see, right? See this liquidity switch on that we've just had. 
I think I might make these, uh, see if I can change these. I want to get, let's go white with these wicks a sec and white with the wicks so we can get a little bit more. Okay, so you can see here, we just wicked down into A, the 200 EMA, but also this bias, the bottom, very bottom at 211 of this buy side liquidity pool. So that's the, when the machines turn on, that's the liquidity providers getting ready to provide liquidity to the market on the open. So until this point, there isn't really, and really they shouldn't um, actually interact with the market really until the open, which is why you don't get halts in pre-market. So, uh, or at least um, volatility halts. Um, so yeah, that's that's where it's coming from. We're get, getting that push in. So we might acknowledge that again once the market opens. Just a little indication of what's going on there. But it always tends to acknowledge, look, and if you look at the other side here, well, that's a double top, but generally where that closes, you can take that high to this low and it's just, bounce between the two liquidity pools all right so it literally bounces between this one and this one this one here and it goes to do it again so nxpl literally between two liquidity pools look there it goes again there it goes again so literally it's not going to do anything else it might tap down to the bottom one down here but really this is not real price action it is just to switch off the machines and a bit of a recce between kind of where we was and where we are. So we'll let that get over with. I don't get excited. If you're in a position, it's not going to be nice because it's dropping kind of 50 cents against you all the time. Uh, you just have to kind of ignore it while it happens. It generally will end up at kind of 265 thereabouts where it was. So that is NXPL. The other one, uh, CNXA, has been on there just trying to find the other top gappers this morning. So we should take a look at rent as well. So that was going up in the pre-market. So NXPL. So CNXA, again, this is the sort of thing that I look for. CNXA yesterday went up to 130, which was a benchmark too. Then we went into pulled back from this higher to this low. It left a sell side liquidity up here. We've pulled into it this morning in the pre market and we are acknowledging it again. So you can see here that's the sort of sort of thing that I was saying I look for when we get into one of these levels is the push into well, is the push. Why am I grabbing? Is the push into it? the rejection of it and then a retest into that by a sell side liquidity pool and then a drop that's what i look for similar thing to the buy side as well so that's what we've got here so we're just kind of getting through this liquidity switch on what else we got so let's have a look at rent yesterday because rent kind of was really gunning for it yesterday wasn't it um so yesterday rent went from uh, post market 765 up to 24 dollars now if i'm taking yesterday's move so similarly to the day before on rent similarly to the day before on rent if i'm taking the the start of the move on that post market session so it's all done kind of on session to the high of that move my buy side liquidity is sitting here on rent right so that's that's day one. So if pre-market can hold that buy side and we can push out of it, then the long is on. The long is on. So we're pushing from there. So what we're going to do again now is take well, from the lows of the pre-market session. Actually, that's a liquidity switch on. Let's just go back to the low. From the low of that pre-market session to the high is can we stay or dip into and hold the buy side? And at the minute, the answer is yes, we're above that. We haven't utilized the liquidity that's sitting there at 1520 or 1340, uh, 1320 or 12. Haven't used it at all yet, I don't think. So what the other thing we're going to do is look at the high of the session 
to the low of the session and draw in the liquidity pool. Here we go. We tapped into the first side of that liquidity. So what that means is we're not going to make it any higher than $24 unless we make $22.75 or $22.80. We've got a close above that, clear candle close above in order for us to go any further to the upside. But as we had kind of this level as a benchmark, we spiked right above it on a huge push. And then we've come down and now we're between the sell side and the buy side liquidity pool. Like I said, these pools are dynamic. You would have to keep an eye on them and keep drawing them from the high of post market to the current low of pre market. You're going to have a tap in to this 18 to 19 level for another sell side pool. So today for rent, there's if you tap back into this 18, 19 level, there's a short on potentially down to this 14, uh, 15 to 14 level. You can target the middle sometimes, but be careful of the first level. We can come in straight into that and bounce straight off. So that's currently what's forming our kind of trend line going down here is these sell side pools. So just keep an eye on that. And remember, if we do break this one, it doesn't mean you're going to new highs. You still have to contend with this one between 20. So we use 2070. We still have kind of 22 and 2270 up here. So before we can go any higher, we have these two in our way that is supply and sell side liquidity. Other than that, we're looking for buy side on rent. What was the other one that was going yesterday? Just have a look. L um, RLYB was on a huge relative volume. RYLB. Got that wrong, didn't I? RLYB. Goodness. So looking at this one. This one was a huge little push. Where do we come from on this one? Yeah. Low lows, low, 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 low lows. Yeah, so this one had basically, let's see where this came into yesterday. So this was just popping yesterday. Um, am I looking for here? Yeah. Yeah, so. You can see here in the first push back from February, we pushed up to the benchmark come off. That would have been coming off all the way to the sell side pool. Here's a benchmark up here. This is benchmark number two. So we've tapped into that yesterday. It's a lot thinner. Uh, let's see, and then bring this down. And across, right. So that was the benchmark two. And you can see we acknowledge benchmark two. And then we come in. If you're taking this very low, take it all the way up to benchmark one. Sorry, I was meant to say benchmark one then. All the way up to benchmark one. What you're looking for is it for it to come down and rest at a buy side pull. And there it is. It accumulates in the buy side pull, then pushes up like massive from 180 all the way up to kind of 340. Closes probably underneath that or just, yeah, close underneath it very, very quickly on that pre-market. Then you can see from the top side, look, Going from the top side, getting some dropping on the NQ here. Then, so pre-market, then we drop, and then right before the close, we pop back into it. And this is what's happening with small caps at the moment. Very, very difficult to kind of um, expect that all-day fade right now that we used used to getting. Is it dumps, then it just kind of meanders across and pumps up then goes into sell side and then drops. And if you was taking it from this push to that push up the high, then you can see that's where we ended up. Well, right now, actually, in the pre-market is we are pushing down into that buy side liquidity pool. Um, you can also target the very lows from where it kicked off in that post-market session all the way up to the high. So our resting pool for target today, if we're going to continue down, we'd expect it to target down here in the buy side. And that's the resting buy side pool. So that's where you can expect it to kind of pause and accumulate again. 
or just rest right for for some days uh, it doesn't have to pop again so benchmark two benchmark one high probability of acknowledgement and a, and some form of reversal back down benchmark two even higher probability especially when you see the move coming through it like that a really aggressive one up to it and then uh, back and short so that's r y l b so looking out for shorts on that today if we drop down a time frame get into the nitty gritty this morning you have i literally let's bring this up on a five minute squeeze it all in a little bit so yesterday's high to today's pre-market low come in we're seeing now new sell side down here around three dollars so a pop to three dollars would be a really nice short A pop to be three dollars be a really nice short. Are we likely to get up there? Let's see what we've put in pre market. Oh, okay. So watch out for 280. You've got to break 280 to get up there. Most recent, if I take the post mark, last post market prices into the lows again, here we are sitting in sell side liquidity up there with that best execution at 283 okay so on the open here for RYLB the preferred the preferred short is going to be up to three dollars even though right now what we've done is push into the most recent one so we'll keep an eye on both of these and see what we get on RYLB so just take a look at NXPL see what it's doing after the liquidity switch on no it's still there like I said 265 was its current price up there we're now residing in the buy side liquidity pool at 252 if you're ignoring what is happening now another switch on there so it happens between 8 a.m and 8 15 you get these big wicks there's nothing you can do you can't get in or out of a position into them based on them they just are what they are All right, so what else we got? So uh, CNXA, sell side liquidity pull up there and a benchmark too. So this might be nice this morning. Need to get past this switch on period to see what we're actually dealing with. What else you got popping this morning? PXMD seems to be a 6.95 float. 12 million volume. PXMD. Let's see where this came from. Okay, a bit tight at the bottom there to draw from. Double bottom. Anything on the one hour, giving me a little bit more clarity. No, 15 minutes. No, it's not great at the bottom here. Um, let's have a look on the two minutes, see where we come from on the close. Give us any better indication. Not really. This was a straight pop out of the box. Um, if I was doing anything, I'd take to those prints there, a bit wishy-washy, but that would leave us with a benchmark two up where we are at 90 cents. I don't know if I like 90 cents plays, to be honest. I do like that they've got a reason to get up above. So therefore, the short um, at the benchmark may be a little bit risky. So benchmark two play double top into that level one PMXD. So there's yesterday's uh, post market high. And then today, what are we working out of today? Let's see if we have anything extra. Let's get these volumes down. Kind of looking around. Yeah, so this is a benchmark one based on <clears throat> pre-market. And then if we were to squeeze that in, we'll go looking for benchmark two based on pre-market. So that pre-market action there looking up around 120 so you know it's at one dollars if you're looking for 20 cents on this play <clears throat> excuse me if you're looking for 20 sec, uh, 20 cents on this play you may get it uh, but yeah don't see a lot more legs on that play 
at the moment it would have to continually push out so if we break 125 and close above then there's room kind of blue sky room to go if we're looking back where this has come from would there be anything else up? there's plenty of levels up there on this one all over the shop um so we'll see they were all over the shop from from this one so we'll see what we've got here going into this uh session this morning but it do, it doesn't look like a great long to me doesn't look like a great anything sitting at 90 cents given what could be on it a deal was up wasn't it um a deal was up and is currently sitting in its sell side liquidity pool so if this is backside the buy side liquidity pool just tacked belief but that's where it was it went all the way up to benchmark two smashed into it come back down sitting at buy side then off to sell side which is from the a to the b lows sell side sitting up there being acknowledged by the switch on and acknowledged before in pre uh, in yesterday's post market in the day before yesterday's post market so we've yet to foul off that we've spent a couple of days up here it's a three hour chart so we keep punching it look drop it down to 30 minutes we was once twice three four five times into it six on the liquidity switch on so that is what we are looking at here bear with me a one moment And back um all right so that's a deal so keep an eye on a deal for literally where we are um it is testing up here what can i say what else can i say right so we went from the low here from the last buy side pull to this one and this is how i'm defining if we've still got a buy on right is can it continue to hold buy side pulls so looking into that one here and next buy side pull off this high would be sitting two forty two to two twenty one so they're at two forty six so that's what we've got and we have sell side sitting here that's currently holding us up at the moment, right? So we literally, so the only thing we can do at the moment on this is go from sell side liquidity pool to buy side liquidity pool. Um, and see what we've got so if we're going to go any higher today we've got to get above this three level then we've got 355 else we're looking for shorts for 289 we need to get through both of these buy side liquidity pools before we can fade for the day back down to 140. so that might be a bit of a tricky one it's probably easier trades today to have than if ifbd is still up there is it so same thing on ifbd um, it had a sell side liquidity pool sitting up there. It's currently residing in its buy side pool from the low to the high. OK, 
Okay, so if we're continuing to hold this, we've got a most recent one as well. If we're going to go for another push, we are going to go from A to B, and we're currently sitting down here in the buy side as well. Sell side is going to be from yesterday's high, uh, yesterday's pre-market high to today's Uh, yesterday's post market high. All right, let's see what else we've got up here then. So, so effectively a short on at five sixty is if we can keep that down deeper down to these kind of four forty areas if we can get it an IFBD. Everything else a little bit quiet really uh nxpl pxmd a double lr was on a double lr yes a double lr popped from those lows let's see we've got an a double r so we went to the lows of the post market into there so you're a benchmark one That's benchmark one. Benchmark two sits up there higher and slimmer in turn. Oh man, what's happened there? That's better. There you go. So we're sitting up there at 630, 650. All right. So ALLR is coming off that benchmark. Let's see, where we are. So a huge push off and a pull back to buy side liquidity pull there. Okay, so if we're holding that, we can expect another push. We need to hold that because so ignore the switch on. We have taken it out, but we always do acknowledge these zones on the switch on. So what we're looking for is to come back down to 286 and hold, else we're going to drop lower. If we can hold and grind out of it, we can expect either a, a retest higher, we actually have to break. We're actually going to have to break. Um, one sec, I've got to turn this nose down. Yep, so we're actually going to have to bait. We've got a trade on from kind of this $3 area. If we pull up, we've got a gap between 330 and 4. Could go up to 443. You'd have to break 450 and close above in order to think about going for 650. All right, so there's buy trades on round about here. The sell trades on round about $4, four and a half. If not, we break up and we break up to the uh, kind of $6 mark there. Okay, bear with. All right. Okay, so that might be a bit a bit, <clears throat> bit better on the audio. So So that's ALLR ALLR for you this morning. Anything on wave? No, not really. Not really looking at wave then. Tune. What we got soon? So Tune keeps making these huge pushes, buying uh, buy side liquidity holding, then another push buy side liquidity holding. So um, 
new low. Where's that then? So Toon's got 158 to 140 on buy side. Buy side liquidity there. Sell side broken to the upside on Toon. So you're right where we was back in February. So there's a historic reason to look for some short there down to 55. But let me check if I've got a benchmark up here anywhere. Actually, let's take it onto the daily. Because this looks like it's been playing out longer. So let's drop out to the daily on tune. Yeah, so acknowledge here, acknowledge. So there is room up to three on the daily time frame. This could take longer. It's not necessarily going to be a pop and drop today because we are in the, we're just tapping into this benchmark here as we kind of speak. All right. So that's what we've got here is there's a bigger, there's a bigger uh, buy side pull. I just drew it in, didn't I, on the two hour? Where is it? It's down at 160, so I'm not going to see that necessarily. In the... Why isn't that showing on the two minute? It's from 160 to 140. Oh, it's over here. So there's buy side down here, and there's more. So we can we can come down here to 160 to grab and go up to threes potentially it might not be a day trade though and then we're also checking this last swing because if you're going to get down that low you're going to have to break the gap here so there's a gap between 165 and 160 so this is the most recent one liquidity switch on has acknowledged this one as well one, two, onto the into the acknowledgement there. Um, so let's see what we've got. Um, trade what we see on that one, I think, as it happens. Alt w. So we're aware of these levels, but we'll see what rejection we get off of the open. All right, so that's about it for what's popping today. I don't see a lot else. ZPTA. There's no real new releases generally on Friday, so that's why the small caps are a little bit um, can be a little bit lackluster on a Friday. Um, so ZPTA already popped and dropped. Uh, yeah, and no, nothing really doing on ZPTA. That was a pre-market play. We could have taken that from the lows. Look, we would have taken that from the lows here yesterday. Benchmark two sitting there at 340, popped to 360. You'd look for shorts on the last pop up. Um, you literally have to get to the micro on this. So for there would have been. So this is the lower place. So it wasn't close enough to the benchmark here, but that was the initial one didn't work out so well the second one from this high to this low is sitting there at 360 that was the nice pre-market play 360 all the way down to uh, three dollars 60 cents in that ignoring this business because you wouldn't have been able to get in or get out so the sell was on there so let's look at some uh, some mag seven all right, so what levels do we have? So here you can see Tesla sell side liquidity pull up there, buy side liquidity pull down there, bouncing between the two. If we're going to draw some new ones and bring this over, the new one is going to be from this low up to the point where we went into the sell side highest point. This one's going to be sitting 167.70. down to 163.80. And then the most recent one, let's have a look. Probably just used it from the high to the low. Yeah, so we've used that one. So we're acknowledging that one in pre-market right now. So sell side and buy side. 
all on. Just going to check, see if we've got the econ any economic uh, trade economics. What have we got? Anything at one thirty today, Friday? 8.30, I should say. There's a bit of news out at 9 a.m. 7.30 was import-export prices. So Tesla, looking to see if we can hold this area here. If a break above 176, we can get up there to 180, or we hold here at 174, and we're looking for a target of 167 on Tesla. Is there anything else pre-market that we can consider? What do we got coming off? Let's have a quick jump over to the NQ, because I feel like we are coming off on the NQs here. Yeah, okay, so NQs, didn't make it up to the sell side liquidity. We've double topped into near the moving average of 200. So let's find out if we are popping into this level and whether we can hold. So if we are going to hold the lows. So if you think of this low coming in uh, to the NQ, and that low price is kind of eroded over time, causing the buy side liquidity pool to be higher than the previous low. Although we have three levels, the last one being at 18373. So we've just pushed down on volume into that, as you can see with this volume candle. Let's get rid of this. So we've put, pushed down into that. So now we're going to see if we don't get some buy side action here which can then take us up higher into the sell side because we didn't get there first time round. So it looks like we've come back to grab that liquidity down here. Could push lower, take, which would take some of these stops out here. But effectively, the first buy side from this low this morning held. And there it is. So we dipped into that, held, pushed off. Now we're taking this one up to that first high. We're dipping into this one and then the very kind of low, ignoring all the swings in the middle sitting here right now, because effectively those pools generally join together on the macro level. So sitting in there now for the NQ. And obviously, if we're looking at any of the MAG7, we really want the NQs to be aligned with that. So if the MAG7 is thinking about a little reversal here, we don't know what it is. It's pushing down all morning, so it's very bearish. But what we do know is we had a benchmark. We've, we held buy-side liquidity on that. We've now attempted to hold buy-side liquidity on it again. So we just look for some form of volume to the upside on these now to see whether everything else can fall into line. So that was Tesla we looked at. NVDA. What have we got on NVDA? It's on a 30 minute. Um, NVDA smashed through its sell side liquidity. Um, what's this one? I'm trying to think if I've drawn this the wrong color. It looks like I have. Where would that be from? Let me just double check. Oh, okay. So these two were, yeah, I get you. So this one was up here. Um, This was a buy side liquidity off of this one. I've drawn this the wrong color, so never mind. So we pushed into this sell side liquidity and we didn't really get out of it and start to push down lower lows out of this push into it and then we broke higher on yesterday's push yesterday's trend day on most of these stocks very nice to see a trend day and uh, rather than just a one bar on economic news push down to a nice trend day yesterday on nvda so now what we're looking for really is let's see where um grab the two hour a second So NVDA's macro, 
I'm looking from the very highs to the very lows over the past few weeks. And then I'm going to say that sell side liquidity is residing up here. So sell side liquidity here. I think it's going to carry on higher. Um, like so you can see, um, you know, if we are defining trend, and this is the way I define trend, is whether buy side liquidity continually engages and we push off. So here's or sell side, whichever way around. So this one looking for a change in direction, we are holding sell side. This is the first sell side we've held. If I was to draw any of these pushes, we are breaking them again here push down we are breaking them so that's what expected in an uptrend is you you foul sell side and in a downtrend you should fail buy side so here we use the first initial identification of oh we could be changing trend here is this holds up at 960 so then even if we were drawing the kind of most recent buy side up to the highs we fail it or even this swing here we fail it so it's telling me that a sell opportunity is now on and then i'm taking each um, each next push down and trying to track it to get in now this one doesn't hold okay if i take this one the first one out the gate doesn't always hold because it's already accumulated liquidity up at these highs it doesn't necessarily need to pull back it's more aggressive and that's a sign that if it doesn't need it you know it's not going to come back this very first one that's the indication of the turn that one normally is there but once that's confirmed this one doesn't always go so you drag it down you come down to the next high you bring that down to the next low that's how you get in and join this new trend is at this point here so this one you're going to grab this sell side you're going to pull that down put it there now remember we're putting this in from this point in time on Wednesday, the 27th of March. We're drawing this box. We come into this box on Monday, the 1st of April, and we reject it. If you drop down on a smaller time frame, that would look beautiful. Let's do that. Yeah, there's your box um, on a five minute chart. And as you can see, we happen to be drawing these on a five minutes on that day. So uh, it must have been in a stream. So you can see we've tapped into that rejected and I would have been going, OK, so we've, we've tapped into a sell side liquidity pool. Let's look for an entry. There's the very first swing that gives us that one. Or you can go with the second swing that gives us this one. That's your entry to get into. Bang, you fell intraday buy side. Off you go down to the downside. OK, so exit that. Get back to where he was. <clears throat> so I'm back out on the two hour. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, just explaining how we kind of are checking that. So again, every one of these swings down, you're kind of trying to track to see if you can get it all. Oh, yeah, very, very sparish still on the NQ. And yes, I'll take a look a second. So you see even this first push here we come into it there you can pull down to new lows then you get the same opportunity there or you can pull it down to the new swing to the higher swing and again if you see the high swing to the low swing you can see there we hold it apart from wicks then you get your nice drop off of that level continue to pull it across continue to pull it down in it comes there's your next short to go down if you bring it to this one to this one just missed that one didn't we just missed that one and then you can bring the most recent one down to these lows and then we fail okay we fail this look so we're now switching direction again so we're now going to go to the upside so the first thing we're going to do are we going to the upside is consider where's the first place that we don't fail buy side all of these buy sides would have been failing um, whenever we draw them they're failing whenever we draw them they are failing and now we bring this bring this one down this is the first one that holds that's an indication we can start to look for the buyers and off you go 
So now what we're looking at again, so the first one, so the, the bottom double dip holds, then we come in, this one we miss as we did at the top side, you don't always get a pullback because they've accumulated on that kind of double push bottom. There's your buy side. The next buy side we are getting now for NVDA is going to be sitting here at 882 to 875. All right, so we'll see what we get. It would be nicer to have a push up into this 930s, 940s area rejection, and then we've got a nice trade down to 879. That's what I'd be looking for on NVDA. NVDA, uh, Meta, I mean, Meta's just been in this massive site. I'm just going to nip back to NQ because everything is coming off right now. I want to see if we're pushing new lows or we are just pulling back. Okay, so the this benchmark that we uh, the intraday benchmark that we pulled from the Globex highs this morning is starting to fail. We've just failed a, bows, a buy side liquidity pool as well. If we were going to continue uptrend this morning, this buy side held, we're then expecting um, the overall push from A to B up here to hold, and we've just failed it. Okay. And we're below double bottoms now. So this is now negated. But you can see an increased momentum come through when we break these pulls. It doesn't mean it's not going to pull back. But what I just heard in my ear is the tape. I'm always listening to the tape. I have uh, indicators that call speed on the tape out, on the NASDAQ, on the ES, on the Russell and on the MAG7. So I'm, you know, I kind of see if everything's fucking shut. Everything's shouting red. <laughs> everything's shouting red at me. I don't know where that come from. If everything's shouting red at me, um, this is what I meant to say. Um, then I can I can hear that speed and I can hear that that momentum's coming in. And generally that speed comes in either when we're coming into the zone and we're pulling out of it or when we're breaking it because it's such a key level. I'm getting it on the NQ right now. All right. So that's it. All we can do now on the NQ, because we don't really want to um, chase this, is see, I'm getting that in my ear, so it puts me off talking a little bit, but it's um, literally going nuts in my ear right now. So we continually bring this down to see where we have an opportunity to add into this. So this buy side liquidity, sorry, this sell side liquidity pool that we will be looking for pullbacks to get into this today. If we can get it, I'll look for a buy side in a minute. But you can see from that high there to this low, if we go any lower here, it's going to come down. It's going to get wider. That's what the pool does. The three levels are going to get wider there. So really coming off now. Expect a, expect a little pullback here if we can get it. Expect a little bounce right now if we can hold so we want that liquidity to kind of dry up no it's still going it's still pushing okay so okay so there so let's see if we get a little bounce here or not that's what i would expect around this 331 level um i'm gonna drop higher to see yeah okay so that was the intraday globex one sitting up here we can come all the way back then so see how we pushed up nice trend day yesterday we pushed up pushed down here's our timing bar yesterday okay right there on the two hours to say this is the time we're going to get in we did bounce off this earlier but the timing bar kicked in at 10 a.m off to the races for sure nice big push and we just rounded at the uh, in the um in the kind of overnight here now we're just going to come back and do what we've done here so similarly every one of these pushes down look the economic news comes out then we push back to sell side liquidity down to buy side up to sell side down to buy side up to sell side again that was this one still bringing brought across like i said there's three levels one two three there was one and two there was three so now we're looking for that push down. So I'm expecting that push to give those levels we can push off. So there's the acknowledgement of this level. Um, and now we're seeing how aggressive this trend is, right? So 
if it's going to come back and accumulate on the open, we could get a pop up to this 18,400 before we get a drop right down here. Where are we to eight? Like I said, 18,233. So keep an eye out for this 18,400 or 395 working down. If we close these 30s and close underneath, then obviously we can go back to the next step, which is 295. 95 is a number loved by the NASDAQ. So let's see if um, if it's to see how that plays out. But if you're drawing them in on your chart just to see, um, looking out here, we're not anticipating another timing bar until midday. Let me check. I would have drawn it on the two hour. So I want to see. So it'll be a two hour period. Yeah. So midday. So that means midday till two o'clock today is where you can expect either a reversal or momentum to kick in. And we've got momentum right now. This is driven off of this bar here, which was the earlier bar. And that momentum has just stayed with us uh, this morning in Globex. Seeing if anything small cap is still kicking out of us before we go on with another Mag 7. We done meta. Let's do uh let's do Google. So Google, what's Google been doing? Let's get this on the two hour mark. No, it looks better on the 45. So Google, we're taking lows to highs. Actually, same thing again, look. I'm not going to draw all the downtrends. I think you get the idea, but we're going from this low to this high. This, yeah, it's a double bottom, right? People are going to call that a double bottom, but actually for me, it's not as quite precise in the way it does this push down and then stops at the buy side liquidity. So it doesn't actually make it to a double bottom. And that is the reason. Comes into the buy side liquidity. Your change in direction is confirmed. We're no longer downside. We're now pushing to the upside. And then you can anticipate that the aggression off of that one means you're not going to come back for your first one, but it is there. So at some point, uh, by side, some point, you know, we can come back down here and grab this. All right. But for the meantime, what you're trying to get into a trade, and this wasn't a very aggressive push up, you don't get into this one either. So now that these two you'll probably find will start to join forces as we go from the very low to the very high but there's nothing we can do we can't get in it we have to keep chasing the next low to the next high and there is the one that you can get into on google so that would have been a few days back there was a pre-market buy that we dipped into it and a lot of these do happen pre-market or very near the open just because it's a pain in the bum to not get in otherwise um so that's it. So that's a buy side there. You can bring that buy side liquidity up to the next push and then see, can we get in again? Yes, we can. Either of these two lows on that day, you could have had boom, boom, in you go again. Now you're looking for another one. Now we fail it, right? You can see we fail it on this bar. So what you've got to do is switch and say, right, well, how's sell side going on? No, sell side failed as well. So when that happens, you're taking it from this low yeah, to this high and effectively waiting to see if this one continues to work. So that's the find the first one. You failed one. Does this one continue to work? The answer in that case is yes. And we fail sell side yet again. So you are still intact to the upside because you failed the, um, the sell side. So our most recent one on Google is coming up. We are sitting here at 158-ish, 158.5 down to 157.5 is buy side. Sell side, mm -mm, not a lot in it really because it's in motion. It's in motion. That's a liquidity situation, so I'm going to ignore it. But I'd continue tracking this down, right? And if we get into here, then you're looking at 160s. If we got, anticipating it, if we got in, to the buy side pool, the sell side pool would be a 160 to 160 and a half. Um, but I am making an assumption we're going to get into it um, right now. It's not really, it's not really valid. Um, it would be 
where it is now. Not far off, a little higher, 160 and a half. So we'll leave it there. So if it pops up here, you could get a drop here, but it would, even when you get down here, that's where it's going to want to target. All right. All right. Uh, what else we got? What else have I got here? Right, so that's Google. I'll have a look at Apple before I go back to small caps again and see if anything is moving there. So Apple, Apple's been um, holding. So similar thing again with that, with these things. There's a push to the high, and there's a low, and we. That's the first trade you can catch nicely. That's what I look for. That's my setup. It's a trend change setup. It's the first sell side pull that holds that you can get into. Nice drop. The second one then you don't get a chance to get into, but it will be there. And I'll just bring it across. Got some sell side action again on the indexes. So then you come down and you grab, um, you grab this level here. And there's your entry on the short side again in pre-market, pushes down, pushes down. Now, this one we break. So you have to kind of toy with this and say, well, actually, where was I holding this? Yes, buy side. Yes, buy side here. And then we can switch to the highs, to the lows. Sell side holding here. And sell side just peaked above but sell side generally in control as we speak now we get to this level and this is very very flat at the bottom here but you can see you know we kind of held in in pre-market yesterday there's the market run so i'm just going to take that low to that high in the post pre-market this morning and see where that can go to so buy side pull Looking to see where we are at the moment, right? This is the liquidity switch on. We have a little tapper in here. It's not really set up yet, to be honest, the sell side liquidity pool on this. But, oh, there we go. I say, we've got to bring that across. So that was the first aggressive one. This one that doesn't get tapped into it has just been tapped into. So I like this better at the moment. Let's see um, what's going to happen here. Um, Apple bucking the trend or of some days um, compared to everything else. But yesterday it joined forces with everything. So let's see if we, we've got something from 175 to 170. If we break up 177 and close above, then we have some, uh, you know, then we can be looking, let's get up on the two hour. I'm gonna say, Nice wide area here, 180s. Yeah, so if we break up about that 176, you've got 180 sell side liquidity pull up there. Might use the first level, second or third, but just consider that as a target if we go long. If not, looking at what the NASDAQ is doing still now in Q. Still coming off. So still working, still working that level now, all right? So we're still working this 331 that we spoke of, wick down below. Same thing even on the two-minute chart that I'm looking for. We have fouled every buy side pull in the Globex session this morning, meaning we have a downtrend on our hands this morning. If it's going to change, we're going to hold a buy side at some point, and that's the first indication that we can turn or correct. So it's not a benchmark, it's a buy side pull. All right, so coming in here, this is our first buy side pull. If this fails more to the downside, you're going to see the next level down there at 296. If it holds, you can see it come back to 400, like we said before. Still the same there. So looking out for what happens on the open for this is obviously you know let that first let the first few minutes settle down it will pick a direction generally uh and then let's see if that direction is to push in and hold or a foul of this level excuse me if the foul of this level you can expect max seven to come down with it 
Uh, let's have a quick look at uh, Dan Apple, Microsoft. Microsoft on the two hour. All right, very choppy on Microsoft here. All right, let's take it from this last swing, see where we've got. So the, from the last touch on this moving average down here, we're going to take that spread. So benchmark one, massive accumulation here, kept from the tops and the bottoms around this benchmark, working it, working it, working it. Finally made an attempt up there. 434 was the actual benchmark on this that it hasn't quite tapped into, to be honest. If I can let go of that, that is benchmark for Microsoft. Um, there is, however, kind of a little bogey level that I say comes in here. You can slap it right in the middle of benchmark one, benchmark two. And that's kind of what we're, we're teasing with this morning. But you could get, expect, I would like to see a pop up to here to kind of 430, 435 to say, yep, yeah, now Microsoft can come down. At the minute, super sideways. I'm assuming both buy side and sell side is holding here. Take the actual high, bring it down to the low. Here we have sell side holding. So in order to get to the benchmark, we have to break close above 429 in order to get to 433. Else you can see this last big swing in we have, we're holding the buy side lows. So we've still got a lower level down here at 4.15.30 that we haven't tapped into on the buy side. So Microsoft clearly trapped between its buy side liquidity pool and its sell side liquidity pool. Buy, 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 buy side pool. Okay, so there's the buy side and sell side. So really what are we looking for? If it just continues to do what it's going to do today, a sell off of 425 if the market's aligned down to 419. The market continues its uptrend like it did yesterday, then it's going to head for its benchmark. But it's all going to be driven by what the uh, what the Nasdaq's doing and the ES are doing today. But um, yeah, if we close underneath this 424 level, um, I think we're heading back down to 419 on MSFT. SMCI, what are we looking at MSMCI? SMCI has been breaking, uh, has broken its intraday. Actually, buy side hold, buy side hold, right? That's what we've got. Let's look for sell side. Sell side hold. Take it to the next one. Sell side hold. So that's where you play. You play buy side liquidity pool to the sell side liquidity pool. Um, that's the best you're going to get. Simply. So sell side. And then now we've pushed out. This was a double whammy. We had a benchmark and a buy side liquidity pool. So nice push out of there. Um, so buy side. We are getting some more sell side here at the moment. Uh, sorry, my bad. This is a buy side pool. So sell side pull, buy side pull. Final level has been used up here. So this is pretty much done. I'm going to leave it there because it doesn't mean it can't work and head up back here. Um, but this one still has a level at 1124. This one has taken it out at 89990. So this is pretty much done. Uh, and we'd be looking for this one to come across because we didn't take out the lower level. So the first level was held, second kind of, but this one is still there. So the gap play, 894 to 817, if we can close under there. If not, we're looking to grind up to um, up to this 161 area. Now, if I'm bringing that down on a two-minute chart, what, what is happening, um, which is like you can kind of get an idea of what's going on on your day, is we're in a buy side pool this is it and we are looking to see what's going on so if we go from the low to the this high or this high it doesn't matter which we're holding you can bring this up now to that pool to this pool we're holding so this now is key to our open if we open and we close below 91390 kind of get down here to 912 and you know we're closing below that level it could be a sell on our hands we could fail this gap and move lower 
else, look at what's happening on the sell side pools here. Whoops. The sell side pools here, you can see, are holding. One here. One here or here. One there again. You can pull this down all the way. One there again. Or you can take it to the most recent. To this one, you can see this held as well. This one, that one failed on prints, right? On aftermarket prints, but now holds in there. So in any case, I'd take the actual high to the actual low for this morning and say this one is sell side, still coming off. Really, really big buyer selling pressure now across the board on NQ, ES and Russell. So there's the sell side. So right now for today's action, we have a sideways between these or we pop one and that's the direction for the day. Going to be aligned with the market. Let's have a look at what the NQ is doing here. NQ still pushing, pushing, pushing. So look, this is what I mean about the sell side pulls. The buy side pulls fails. Buy side pull fails. Here's the acknowledgement of 333. There's the acknowledgement of 95. Like I said, 95 is a level that the NASDAQ loves to, to use to reject off and bounce. But at the minute, it, continued to, it can continue to do these all the way down. Um, Can line those up a little bit better with my 95, 94 and a quarter, yeah, 95. So everything selling off looks like it's going to want here. Um, my target on this would be 233 today if it can get it. Um, it can, like I say, it doesn't mean it can't break this one, but this is a big one, right? Compared to these guys, these little intraday ones, this is just confirming the trend is downside right now. This guy that was up here is going to move because we was basing it off this swing, I think, I believe. Yeah, so we was basing it off this swing or just wherever it was just prior to that. Now we've got a new low in place, even as we speak. So we need to bring this in. And that pulls chasing down. Like I said, it's no longer where it was. It's lower. So the target is lower or the short is lower now so the more we continue to carry on down we have to redraw it but at the moment this level here i think is gunning down for 822 uh so 231 my bad sorry 231 um and we'll see how close we can get to that anything around here these are the v wipes of the play from the economic data news so we'll see how they react this one's clearly ignored got double uh two economic data releases kind of here so um we'll keep an eye on those all right so quick look back at what has happened on some of these small caps this morning which is basically nxpl and uh, for me it was cnxa so nxpl NXPL, it was a little short opportunity here as we first got into the sell side liquidity pool. But I know that this benchmark is up here at 350, so it can still go for 350. Much rather short 350 than I would short around here. But this has pushed up again, buy side held, sell side on the liquidity switch on, and then now sell side is holding on good pre market data. So I'm ignoring that business. This is the pool that is still valid. I'm not saying it's finished because of this business. I ignore that. So this pool is still valid from this low to this high, ignoring the switch on. So NXPL could go in. If it wants to go higher, NXPL, it has to break. Two sixty six. So that's just the way I'm structuring it up here is, you know, there will be sell side liquidity here. It doesn't have to hold, but it will be there. There can be a short on from 62 to 30. 
if we break 266, there's a higher probability you're going to break 78. And if you break 78, you are going to then probably quite quickly run to benchmark two. But bear in mind, just be careful of the one that sits in the middle, all right? So $3, let's say, bring it down to the round number. Be careful of $3. That could be a bogey level. We can tack, tack up to there, pull back, and then go later in the day for 3.50 and then run off after lunch. So just be careful of that on NXPL. CNXA. CNXA is at a benchmark two. Is holding sell-side liquidity at 120. How much room is in the trade? Well, there could be quite a lot. Let's zoom out a little bit on time because this was such an aggressive move. So like this. See this low to this high. It's done it once before and it went to benchmark one. This is benchmark one. There's the quick move to benchmark two. And what it done was acknowledged. Was acknowledged its buy side. Look at it accumulate around that buy side. It did go below it, but it got back into it and above that second level of liquidity and then run off over the past few days. So. This could be the end of it. I don't know what's if we put a line horizontally here. I don't know if that would align with anything else. Looking left, I mean, um, I don't know what you think about that. Maybe there's some spike spikes around here. I don't know that it's any different to anything else, um, but if that's what it is looking left. So you could argue there's some alignment with that. Um, but ultimately, we're there. So I'm my bias would really be short on this today, unless you can break 140. If you could break 140, and sorry, if you can break 135 and close above at 140, clearly, then you could go kind of supernova on this. But for the minute, uh, my bias is short off this. If we can go short off the open, definitely trying to ball pullbacks on CNXA. Um, with the most recent one, Right, so to go any lower, we have to break 104 on the buy side. And your most recent micro sell side is going to be up there at kind of 112 ish. There's your sell side. So that's CNXA. So what we're going to do on CNXA is really look to see if we can't get a pop up here or up here. Either one works for me. The higher the price, the better, because it's a dollar stock if you like playing it. The, where did I say the target would be? Or didn't I? I didn't because I got waylaid by that. The rest in liquidity pool for this, you have to take it from the very low from the start of the run up. Up it goes. Now come back down here. Now that this doesn't do the job for the stock. It's a NASDAQ stock. Doesn't really do the job for it, does it? To uh, keep it in the exchange being under a dollar. So if it's resting liquidity pool is under a dollar, that's not going to do the job. But, um, you know, as kind of got 180 days to sort this stuff out usually. So it can come down. And this is part of the 180 days, by the way. All right. So it's like all going back to the start of the month. And now we can pull back, we can accumulate, and then we can go supernova again. But this stock needs to stay above a dollar. So a resting liquidity pool at kind of 50 cents is no good. Having said that, it is still an intraday target or a target for the next couple of days if they can't break this sell side, right? If that stays intact, chances are you're coming down here to grab to rest and grab more, accumulate and go again on CNXA, right? Just seeing what else is coming on. Toon. Toon new highs. So toon new high. Oh, toon. Uh, okay, two new high. What's this up here? We do, okay, so we've got double kind of benchmark going on here. Anything above? Okay, we've got three dollars above. So be careful on tune. Um, late pre market, you know, we are still pre market, but I mean, it's kind of an early and a late. You've just posted yesterday's highs to its lows, you've just broken. 
tapped into a sell side liquidity pool, a buy side liquidity pool, and pushed off. So if we're looking at that on the two minute or something, We're looking at that on the two minute. There it was. So is that liquidity switch on? Yes, it is. So we come back, we acknowledge the buy side pull, the liquidity switch on, acknowledge the buy side liquidity pull, and we're running off into a benchmark. If we're going to stop at the benchmark, we need to see some sort of some sort of run up, pull back, hold its sell side liquidity, and then foul around the benchmark. Else, whoops, one, two, three else it's going to look for three on this push and then you want to be not you don't want to be um you don't want to be taking let's go to the most recent uh, so the most recent low to high so the pre post market to the pre market high yeah i don't really like chasing anything i'm always looking for it to come back to the buy side liquidity pool so if we are going to go for threes this is the one that needs to hold we can acknowledge this i'll be looking for shorts up here and anticipating the break of this if i get my setup but ultimately tune is um yeah i mean literally acknowledging the mid side of that benchmark as we speak if it can hold this though and grind out of this area at the 190s, 185s, then it could look for three. So be careful of tune today. Whoops. Be careful of tune today. Has a huge amount of buy side pulls down here for targets. It can come all the way down to 150, um, but be careful. It's been holding the most recent buy sides, right? It's even got this one, 168 can still be a liquidity level that holds here. So that's on tune. So benchmark, I'm going to look for shorts and see what we get. What else happened? CNXA at the minute, potentially coming off still into its buy side. CNXP coming off the sell side. Yeah, so they all look a bit shorty to me at the moment, but they all, as always, have buy side liquidity pools that we are looking to see in the first instance on their first dip down. Are they dip buyers? If they're dip buyers, they generally hold the first liquidity pool, come out of them and then go. The latter ones will dump into here about 10.30 and then mess with you on the algo front and then come up and grab something else later on in the day. Uh, short squeeze and then come off in the late afternoon. All right, so that's it, guys, for the pre-market session. Uh, we'll see what we've got on the open, um, but for now, I'm going to take a break. All right, guys, I'll see you in a sec.
All right, so just letting that open get away with itself there. So let's just grab what we've got here one sec. There you go. <clears throat> so we didn't quite get down to this 30, 230 level. That doesn't mean it needs to do it before it gets up to the 380, of course, or anywhere else in between. But I'm just trying to look to see if we're going to hold any buy side and we have just so this is the most recent buy side that we have to demolish if we are going to continue short today so yeah not yet convinced on ups you know on upside is still very very downside on this everything seems to be coming off a little bit uh nvda has come off from where let's have a look Yeah, so NVDA yeah, popped to its sell side liquidity, wicked above it, come back down is off it. So there's the uh, momentum play that could be on here. The momentum sell up on NVDA where the red is just taking out green to the downside. I'm trying to get an idea. Got 82 on this, seeing if anything else lines up with it. Yeah, down there at 8.75 actually. So it's acknowledged the first kind of profit level of this, 88.70. There's another one down at 83.65, 83 but it's, it's kind of right where that sell buy side liquidity pool is. So expect a momentum play on NVDA um, down. If it wants to grab some liquidity before it does so, it's going to look for it up here uh, just below just uh, 8.96 here. Okay, so just there, just a little bit above 896 and a half, maybe. But if not, um, yeah, so pro possibly up to 896 before it goes down to 882, dependent on what the overall market is doing. NQ looking quickly back to it is right, bounce is holding that buy side liquidity. So I wonder if we're going to get this push up to 30 or even further here let's have a look Darn. where did that go uh, just looking at the so there's only two small caps we had on play i'm just trying to see if anything's shouting out here i'm going to turn this volume up over here Oh, ALLR, ALLR. Um, so ALLR is coming off. So yeah, so ALLR is using the deepest part. It's just failed that buy side and is coming back out of it now. So we can expect to see a four on that, I think, if we can continue. Um, or, you know, almost a double top. So yeah, I'd look to short fours on this. There's one above up there at six. So there's, that's not the only, it doesn't mean it have to stop there. If we break above 454, we can go. But right now there's a, a buy on from this these 20s areas up to 394. There it goes now. Another push on the tape there coming from ALLR. Looks like it wants it, doesn't it? Looks like we've got another 40 cents to go, 30 cents to go, 20 cents to go, 15 cents. Very, very close to 390. So looking to see what it does around this 390 to 420 area. Right, there it is. So we've tapped into the first side of that liquidity pool. Let's see what it does. Just trying to see if we've got a tiny little benchmark run off of these lows here. First swing in, higher. It's higher. It's up at 415, but it has acknowledged the first. It's acknowledged the first side of that liquidity pool there. That little rejection. A lot of downside here. Riot, Mara, Coin. All the bitcoins coming off here. Heavy, heavy on the downside for those.
ROYB short off of its uh, pre-market level that we mentioned at 275, down at 256, 25 cents in CNXA. Coming up, just broken its sell side, actually. <clears throat> Looking for the bigger sell side at 120. Like I said, not a great deal of money up there. The benchmark's at 32. You're talking about 20 cents in that. <clears throat> if you want to gamble off for that, 20 cents. N NXPL off of the sell side liquidity level um, right here. Closing below the buy side liquidity pool at the moment. So we are looking to short pops on that, if not already short from the pre-market suggested level up here at 260. Up to CDE. New high on CDE. Uh, tune. Tune into its benchmark. It was a double benchmark pulling back. It's in its buy side. It's just wicked into the first buy side. So be careful of this. It doesn't have to drop just because it's in benchmark two. But the textbook play would be coming off of... this sell side here okay so looking to alert that one see if we have it's tight this is the buy side that is the sell side if this cracks above 210 and closes then you can look up to three so be careful on tune if not we have a short on if two dollars 205 holds I'm just looking at allr see if it wants to push i'm still hearing this on the oh it's just gone quiet on the tape mind you so still into that sell side liquidity pool. Four seventeen to four sixty is the intraday off the current lows. So we're sitting kind of mid pool, mid to high pool. Currently tacked into the first level on it. You could have a momentum play here if we change colours. If we close that, that's the momentum play on. A quick push up into this 430 area potentially. The new, uh, this is now negated because we used all that liquidity up. You're coming across now on AWLR for the first target. If, well, first target or a buy side, a grab of liquidity there. Where are you? ALLR on the tape again. Looks like it does want another push. Let's see what we got. We'll move this up if that's the case. NXPL. Okay, so if we do get a show up here at 420s to look for, target would be going to be like 320s here. But remembering, we still have more room to the upside. We still have fives up here for 490s, 480s. So we're going to look to see what holds at the moment. See what a VWAP is on this guy. Yeah, got it, Wilson. So yeah, consistent drop, but into its buy side. Uh, oh no, actually, just below its buy side. Yeah. So yeah, looking this, looking to see if we can hold this buy side at the moment. Sell side. That was the short from 260 called out on pre-market down to this kind of 220. So there was the 40 cents play there. It's gone a little bit lower. Um, looks pretty backsideish, but I do have 340 above it on NXPL. So. You know, we can come down to these liquidity pools and grind out of them. So just seeing what kind of action we get here. If the shorts are going to join in on this one, CNXA crossing 127. If the shorts are going to join in on this one, um, if we're going to get another look at, it's key as to whether we're going to break 236. Two thirty six. The overall sweep from that, taking the whole high to low. There's a level up there. So we're literally stacking sell side up here. Really would have to be a massive push, massive push to get through those levels at the moment. But 
Um, let's see if the shorts can't join us somewhere around 230s. If not, and it starts to grind up, then be careful because we have that gap above 280 up to 340. Just checking that NQ out. See if we're making our way. Okay. So NQ upside off the open, given its drop. I've got one, th yeah, eighteen three eighty up here as a as a quick push to it if it can do. Um, if not. I think we've already seen the sellers come in on these MAs. It's whether or not they're going to get paid or not right now with their stops just above here at 36, I would imagine, or maybe 39, but that sort of area. But first, buy side liquidity pool of the day has held on the open. Everything kind of prior to that has failed on the buy side. ALLR, thanks, Wilson. Yep, and a lot dropping off nicely off of that um, off of that area. See, look, the momentum play there just tapping into the sell side liquidity. That's why you've got to know it's there, not one to get long on. That is the target of three fourteen. So three kind of eighties down to three fifteens. Nice short on ALLR. Is room to the upside. So it's whether or not this is just going to grab some liquidity on the way back up. But that would definitely be my first target down there. See what the VWAP gives us on this below VWAP. Yeah. So we need a VWAP reclaim. That would be up there at about 360. But I'm feeling a three and then a possible grind out of it. We'll see what we get. Uh, actually, that's a new high. Let me just double check that that is the right level. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much still the same level there. Okay, uh, anything else kicking off here? CLDI, I heard that one before. No, no volume in that for me. Yes, sir. PXMD, anything going on on that? Oh, possible, possible um, sell side on PMXD here. Mind you, there's not a lot on it. It's a 120 play. That looks like that looks like a pop to short to me. Having been to benchmark two on PM PXMD. If you close above 115, clear close. If not, we've got the shorts on here. On PMXD PMX PXMD. Um yeah, it's, it's, it's versus where it's got to go. It's kind of almost been there in terms of pre-market. We'd have to zoom out a bit and find out where that newer target would be. So the newer target, it's already used that one. So you've already got the 75 cents one as a target, which is his current. Um, I'll just take it to the new high, really. It's probably end up, yeah, it's 70 cents. That target is 70 cents regardless on PXMD. So just looking to see if, yeah, that looks short to me on PXMD. PXMD LLR or PMXD. Oh, Tune, what's happening with Tune? So Toon sold off from that benchmark. We got that attempted push up, held this first level of the sell side liquidity pool there. I can grab that, can I? No. Jeez. There's the first sell side holding there. Boom, into its target down there at 188 on Toon. Toon has got more. Toon's got three on it up there, so... We'll wait, but that play is there. PXMD coming in. We we'll see if we're going to get that short now. It's looking for it, looking for it. Need that volume, need that close under VWAP there to give it some momentum. ALLR is the one to push. There we go. Deeper into that. That would be my initial first target there at 305. Just touched in there from four. Nice LLR play. 
Uh, just heading back to the NQ, getting some noise off NQ here. Okay, albeit gone slightly quiet. Okay, it's a bit sidewaysy off here, so each one of these is holding on the NQ, just trying to see if we've got direction on everything else. So climbing by side pulls here. So we're waiting for one of these to fail or they keep holding either way. doesn't matter. There's their buys until they fail. Um, we didn't quite get down to this big buy side down here, which I was hoping to get down at 233. So it's whether or not we're going to climb up or if one of these are going to fail and then we're going to continue down. But 375 has got liquidity if we need it just have a quick look at what the rest of the index is doing here tesla as that pushes down into that buy side tesla not doing anything apart from it's really up there to its first target off of the pre-market look up there at 73 other than that sidewaysy for tesla nvda come down grabbed its sell side look we drew that on there right we drew that on there we said it's going to come back to this sell side it can then drop down to 882 on NVDA. Uh, do, 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 do. So we didn't get the momentum play again. There was a momentum play stalled. That's when you know it's coming back for liquidity. Double top into liquidity. Let's see what it does from here. Little trend line going up there. Just broken. Let's see if that's got momentum to the downside. Anything else lining up with that? Meta's been in this top of this, like literally been in this accumulating up here for absolutely ages since march been up here for months not really interested in getting involved in anything meta apart from is it actually aligned and helping anything to do with the index i don't think so right now um, drop on amd below this uh sell side liquidity we said there that we've got 74 gap down to 149 if we break that so let's see if that can get there so google I want to be down in a small. So Google is up from the open. So it's looking for best liquidity, ignoring ignoring the liquidity switch on. Is that 8 a.m.? Yeah, forget that. So let's go here. Yeah, it's kind of up there. It's kind of up there from the whole. Yeah, definitely. That's the whole pre-market. That's best market. That's best execution up there. Let's see if Google wants to come back off, off there. If Google breaks uh, 16166, you're going to have more upside. Until then, it's going to look... Uh, want to come back look at that indication of the pre-market there they wanted to go long on google look that was it that little hold it's just a little indication that little first hold now then we're coming back up here i should use this one there's buy side so if best execution holds we can come back down here to 160 for google um I still feel like that's, you know, that's going to bring the NQ down, but not enough for new lows. Apple pushing higher again, leading the pack. It was yesterday. Another one here. Look, that last swing in the open. The last swing in the open, it kind of held, you know, just as soon as it popped above it, 174, it didn't want to stop. Another one here. Tiny, tiny little advantage there on Apple straight through its large it's a swing by a pause right here come the sellers now off this is so nvidia i'm presuming is leading the way on this is it it's just starting to it's just starting to so let's see how the nq is reacting to that yep so there's the push for the nq broke that first sell side this this first buy side this second buy side held on that push and a, and a big rejection off that let's see if it's got anything remember i'm still looking for this to get down to 240 if possible the question is will it go to 380 before it does it allr potentially grinding up for the minute out of its uh, little buy side zone okay so we've just popped above it um we're going to get micro on allr just to manage to see if there's anything else we've got on right so 333 
That's the current cell side, top of the cell side. At 333, so we can see continuation if that holds to the downside. Not maybe too much, but maybe down to 299, 291. If 91 fails, then you've got more downside for sure. But at the minute, we're just checking out if 313 can hold. And the next one, which would be a nicer pullback to join the shorts, would be up here at kind of 360. 360 to 375, is that? 379, 360 to 379. So if we can get... If we can use this buy side liquidity pool and close above this sell side at 331, we're going up to 360, 370 to get short back down to three. Still got some red on the Russell. RTY is red. So Russell was leading this yesterday. Russell was kind of ahead of the NASDAQ on the on the move yet up yesterday and is kind of leading the move down today as well. So new lows for Russell's today. Let's see what the NASDAQ's got. Yeah, so the NASDAQ now following suit, smashing through two buy sides at this point. And now I'm looking for this to, to break 80 as well. And then looking for 234. ALLR still on the tape being called out. So that's still getting volume by the looks of it out of the buy side pool right so if we close above 36 we're going back to 60. Hello another push on the tape can't seemingly do it right now 330 being defended on the offer It's the third push that's been defended on ALLR. Just quick look back to the NASDAQ. Okay, yeah, so it looks like that downtrend's back in, back in from the Globex session now into the uh, live. If we break 85, we are going down to 34 pretty quickly. This is the last chance for the buy side to hold. Both of those levels negated now. So let's see what we get here. Getting this push down creates another sell side that we don't go higher to any further sell sides, this gap, we don't fill this gap unless we break this level here. But this could be a pop up here to join the sell side now. Let's see if we get it or whether the buyers are really in control. One, two, three pushes down. So let's see if that was a bear trap or not, that push down. So LLR, another attempt there, 336 defended right at the top of the sell side on ALLR. Well, what happened there? I'll get out of that. There we go. Oh. So yeah, defended there at the very top at 36. Let's see if I hear this on the tape again. So everything going, look, everything, I'm seeing more, more green here at the moment across the board. Let's see what NQ is having on this. Oh. 
yeah, still, still looking a little bit heavy here. Just checking NVDA, see if it wanted to uh, come down and grab. So, so NVDA into its sell side there coming off. Yeah, if we break here now, 892, we're going to see it come. Yeah, here we go. NVDA is now looking for its downside. NQ. NQ about to break here. Oh, there we go. There's the break. So now, realistically, we do have a couple of um, VWAPs down here to contend with, including the one it's at now. But I, I'm looking for 230 on this break, see if we can't get it, if it can push down here. Or oh, wicked into that one, though. That's the double bottom. That's the double bottom on the day. Let's see if that's good. That's a double bottom on NQ right now. My target is ultimately down here at 30. Is that where we're going to get it or not? It's going a little quiet on the tape. Oh, there's a bit. That's a bit of seeing some red now across the board. We're going to get that push. Russell's dumping. Google coming off, Microsoft coming off, Amazon coming off at the same time. So whether or not we're going to get this flush now. Are we going to get a flush below this 77? So defended 282 there. This is it now. Are they going to try and push or they're not? They're going to pull back some. This is it. Defended 282. Defended 282. Now we're going to see if we've got this push on. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Nice, nice. That's good, good, good. Right, so I really want to see. Oh, man, we don't want it reflecting off like that, do we now? No, 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 sir. That was that was unfortunate there. I thought that was going straight down to 240s at least. Watching, you've got to watch these bear trappy NQs. Just looking to see if we haven't got any. Uh... The 282s being defended. No, 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 no. They broke 282 now. So 282 over. Let's see if uh, they can bring that little range into the equation here. That was a lucky, lucky cover of a short there on the NQs. It was $300 up. Covered it at minus, uh, covered it at uh, 50 because it shot right up. Couldn't get out on that wick. All right, let's see what we've got now. We have one more go. Oh, we're coming in upside. Let's have a quick look what the guys are doing here. Tesla pushing up. Once it's liquidity pool at 174, NVDA. Use its sell side. Yeah, still, still can try for this, but what it's just uses its buy side. Look. We've got to be careful now that this just doesn't fade out for the uh, for the morning. There's its buy side. Right, gone quiet on the tape right now. So NVDA needs to close below 889 now if it's got anything more left on it to the downside. 
Meta not interested. AMD, Google coming off. Google wants 160, doesn't it? So NQ, a little bit more downside now. Let me see if the Russell will come with it as well. Ryan coin really heavy off this morning. And Mara still they're all doing the same thing. I always do do the same thing, but uh all right, here we go. One more chance here for right. This level is key now. See if they can defend 175. Yeah, defended 175. That's a buy side pull. So again, now that's the one we've got to crack. Can't get, can't really show you on. I'm looking at a tick chart at the top here. But that's the level that we've just pushed into there. Just wicked into that buy side pull. Now let's see what we've got. Let's see if anything's going to come with it. Tesla and Microsoft off a little bit right now. Apple coming with. Meta push up, doing its thing. Russell indicating the downside now. Is that new lows on RTY? Yep, new lows on Russell. That was leading the way. Let's see if NQ follows that push. It did do before. Massive. This is exactly what you look for, though. It's so... You know, that's definitely a bullish a bullish little pattern there because you're held, holding buy side liquidity here. So this is what I'm looking at here. Just looking at a 15 second chart to just try and get into that data a little bit closer. Buy side holding right here. So a fail of that, we go down. Sell side, sitting up here, tapping into kind of 88, 90 area if it needs it. To tap into that 8890 area if it needs it. Okay, there it is. There's the push. So getting blue, blue off, uh, red off, green off of NQ and red off of RTI right now. Right, that's it. That's the push into the sell side liquidity. Let's see what we got on the NQ now. A little push here. Let's see if it's got it. Let's see if it's got it this time. Come on, NQs. Tesla's coming off. Apple coming off a little, little bit with it, but only just a little bit now. We're not getting a flush at all. Meta, again, doing the opposite. ES coming off. NQ coming off a little bit more. Apple coming off. Russell off. Amazon off. Come on, let's see what we've got there. We've got any legs on this this time? Have we got any legs on this this time? I want to grab something off this if we can get it. Come on, come on, come on. I'm looking for this now. Look, we're in this trade here now, looking for 450s down here. Come on, come on, baby. I'll take that. I'll take 405, 45. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Okay, that's good. Um, wow, I've just completely flushed up the chart there. Look, let's see if we can get rid of that. <laughs> uh, let's go get something behind here. All right, so there was the push I was looking for straight into the... Um, so this is the economic data VWAPs that we've come into. Ultimately, I was looking down for 334, but that's why I covered right there down at that point for what was, uh, I'll just check that out in a second what it was, but um, 
All right, now I need to find out where on earth that screen went because I literally threw it up there. Um, I seem to have detached everything. I need to reattach that if possible. All right, let's try that again. So that was a nice, let's get rid of this tile. I'm going to need to add the chart here somewhere. Where are you? I'll try and re, re, uh, reboot that top stack X account there. See if I get something better. No, it's just giving me the view I had already. Can't find the components on this guy at the minute. All right, listen, we're going to carry on looking at what the NQ is doing here. So there was that nice push in um, to uh, yeah, basically those economic uh, VWAPs there. So let's check what followed suit there. So I'm, we was looking for NVDA to make that push. See, what is quite negligible? It didn't even get below its sell side. Literally was a one bar push down on Tesla. Uh, sorry, on um, NVDA. Tesla did make a push down. Didn't quite see its sell side liquidity pool sitting up there, very very sideways for a Friday. Uh, Meta, yep. Sorry, NVDA, as we said, between two pools, now pushing up to its sell side. Google didn't make it down to its buy side, though. And Apple Apple broke the top of its sell side and has just come back to the back to it. So NQ, then I'm expecting a little bit of uh, bullishness off of those lows right now. So those buy sides have failed. Next sell side liquidity pool to come up to then, if we're going to retest that, is right here. CNXA being called out on the tape. Okay, so there's the NQ tapping into sell side liquidity here. All we're doing is trying to play these zones from one to the other. Where are those components on top step? Jeez. Literally crashed that platform. How did I crash that? That's better. All right. So it rescued it back. Um, so yeah, on the express account on top step, that was a a push so we was taking this move here so literally as we closed under that push up 
into the sell side liquidity there. So this looked very, very bullish for me, given that that's my perfect entry at a low. So I would be saying, yeah, you know, that looks really, really good. But it wasn't my low I was anticipating it being the low. I was either looking for those economic VWAPs or I was looking for the actual um, buy side liquidity pool, which was still down there at 233. Does so not to say we can't still get there this morning. Uh, but but yeah, that was looking. So in order for this to be bullish and continue bullish up, then it had to break the sell side. And as I was looking for that lower price level, as soon as this rejected, I shorted that and got in and covered down there that you can't see on this chart, but we covered it for $444 on the futures account. Um, and yeah, and it was it was there. So that was why I had my order there to get out at um, kind of 60.25. Well, it's actually a bit lower. It's 57.75, but uh, I covered it because it just looked so like it was a pop. So I just I just mark it ordered out of that position. So I now flatten everything on that account to um, to save any erroneous positions getting into into now so that's safe so i'm good with that 444 on the day um on the futures account happy with that um, so now just looking at what's being called out back on this so a quick look at allr allr still trying to fight with that 330 level on the sell side liquidity pool um kind of middling isn't it i'd much rather sell 365 370 than i would where it is at the moment um given that I still keep hearing it on the tape over there. Um, RLYB, that's a beautiful play. Look off of there. This is the pre-market. This is why, you know, the in-session really isn't where it's at. It's the pre-market levels here. This is the pre-market call. We drew this in earlier on stream. Uh, if we get the 270, 275, there's the short on the open. There it was, 275 to 243. CNXA, we had a level as well. Um, okay, CNXA on the level has uh, got used its buy side pull. Uh, so pre-market, we had this level, a buy side pull to watch out for. We did dip by straight below it and then reclaimed. Then we broke that sell side liquidity. So as soon as we're breaking sell side liquidity, that was that was what I mentioned. If you break that sell side, you're very likely to break the next one and head for new highs. I don't think I've got a lot above here on CNXA now. Um, let's see if I've got anything else lower off these lows. No, that was it. So that can go, I mean, actually, okay, I do have one. I do have one. I do have one. Let's take everything off this for a second. Okay, so we're above it at 138. So let's just draw this in as a line rather than, so we're, we're kind of, on that level now, I'm going to have to zoom back into this. Take everything off. Okay, so now I'm looking at $2 then. Now we're looking at $2. Template. Sell side. No, benchmark. So that's a benchmark up there. So again, the lower time frame one we've now gone for the bigger swing off back way back there as the spread using that spread to indicate where that program might end and that's going to be up two to 210 at the moment if we put a level in the middle there still got some nq noise coming off here one second oh so nq NQ using that sell side liquidity now and coming off again. Wonder if this is a push down. Look, we're going to need to crack this again. So now it's key as to whether we're going to hold this trend day to the downside. So there's the buy side pull there. 
So just a quick look at what we're doing here. Tesla, sideways. NVDA. NVDA is literally using each of its um, pools now, literally siding through each of these. I won't draw it in, but there you go. There's another one there. So there'll be another one on the buy side as well. Another one on the buy side for NVIDIA. VIA needs to break below 892 now if it's going to do any further damage to the downside. It's sitting in there. But the Russell again coming off again. The Russell has led these pushes yesterday and today, noticeably, before the NQ and the ES. So everything looking a little bit red in terms of the last few bars. Microsoft needing to crack 422 here. It's its original first push. It's almost doing it at 422.80. Well, for where, where it is right now, literally the, the low of day is at 422.53. So if Microsoft can push that, Apple red bars, Google red bar most recent, and AMD red bar meta. They're both NVIDIA red, Tesla red, and Q. So NQ looking for this level to hold now. So this is either going to hold. If we get the close below 169, I just feel like we've got 233 written on this. Looking at any further time frame and clearing this up and getting the VWAPs and all the noise off. So I've, I'm looking at this 233 level. I'm looking down here. So if I'm taking this last play, I'm taking this last play. Are we coming in down anywhere close to that? 245. I went to the wick. 234. Yeah, I reckon we're going to bust that. Let's have a look at this NQ on the one minute. Let's put the drawings back on a sec. All right, so here we come. Everything's with it right now it's just what happens at the bottom of this pool or not so cxi continuing down off that level oh, i'll put these back on now cnxa sorry i'm looking for no wonder i didn't have any drawings on it cnxa push in then so Another level up there at 206. I'd rather that pull back a bit deeper to get into it around 125. Don't know if we'll get it. Rent. Pull back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go again on NQ. Noise all over the place and it's looking red. Just going to zoom in on this, see if we can't crack. Right, that's it. That's the tick into the that's the tick into the lowest part of that pool now. I'm gonna wrap it up here in five guys coming into that 3.30 time. It's not doing anyone any favours trading after 3 30 and until after lunch, really, I found. So um all right, here we go. So the NQ is now pushing off of that level. Look at that. The last level to be defended, it was cracked to 233 in my opinion. Okay, so that was Indo screaming at me. I couldn't quite work it out what it was. Um, quickly, just look at the 30 minutes, see where we're coming from. No, more than that. Look at the daily. Okay, the daily. So that Indo is looking nice. Um, let's uh, move these drawings, get this set up.
Right, benchmark two on Indo. I don't know where Indo's just come out from, but um, benchmark up there currently in one as well. So you can't ignore this one, right? You can't always ignore the first one. Doesn't always go to the second one. Bogey level sitting in the middle right there at 468-ish, 470. Doesn't matter what, but just whereabouts there. Take 450 if you want. Doesn't really matter. Um, it's close enough when you see that rejection bar push into it. All right, coming off the open today. From using the open today. So that's going to look like the bogey level, isn't it? That you've got, let's, let's just acknowledge that. I prefer to use the daily levels, but we have we do have this little level up here as well. So we'll see what pushes on INDO. Interested now whether we can close beneath that last. Well, actually, I want the one minute candle at three minute. To alert at 3989. Obviously, I much prefer shorting these benchmark two. So just making sure I've covered all alerts on that area. If we continue to push up on INDO. And there it goes on the tape. So there's the benchmark, benchmark, benchmark push. As soon as you fail those highs, now we're pushing. Nothing on the uh, nothing on the pink moving averages to get in at the moment. It's all kind of momentum plays. Nice little move though, nice little move. Nothing off the nothing in pre-market really for that little, just a slight bit of low liquidation push up there. Not a huge gap up off of the overnight. So let's put Indo on the watch and then back to look at what the overall market is doing. All right, here we go again. So another push. Here we go. Let's watch this now because this one could really go. So I've got to be careful of this double bottom there as we come into it. I think this is just going to push one two thirty two. It's just hard to get into. The only opportunity was there, literally up here, and that's the kind of the one I got in last time, which was up here. Don't think it's going to give you the opportunity to have another go. Little pause, everything gone quiet on the tape here. Micro pullback on NQ to cut to um, deal with. There they come again. To look at these guys, what they're doing. Are they slamming their levels? Or are they just acknowledging, just acknowledging on NVDA and Tesla? Meta looking the same. AMD, no. Google pushing. Apple got further to go. Microsoft further to go. So, yeah, here we go. There it is. There it is. Those were the indications there. Apple and Microsoft had further to go. They are coming off now hard. We've got to fill these gaps now. Come on, you've got to give me down to 230 now, surely. Here we come. 224, 225, 230. We've been waiting for this all day.
There they come. Right, another 200 out there on the uh, Express. So another account on the uh, on the Express there. So another 252 in PL added to that 400 that we made earlier. Just taking that nice push into. I've done it again. I just can't move. As soon as I've moved, <laughs> I can't grab it back. Right. So there's the level that we said there: 224, 225. Actually, we did get to 224, pushing deeper into that level. So that's the level that I've been waiting for. Look at the higher time frame. This is all micro analysis in terms of how are we going to get to it, what we could do to get to it, right? And the two plays we've just taken there are um, are these two, right? These two, what time was that first one? Yeah, 23 and kind of 37 there. So 23 coming off. Thanks, Wilson. Nice one. So, yeah, that is it. If I look at this on the higher time frame, all I've done is, as I've done every single day with these, and the economic news has just literally kissed them each time. So I'm literally just taking what happened yesterday and bringing it into today, um, and and that's where I, you know, obviously I throw these on, so don't worry too much. But look, pinpoint into this level now, and that's all I was really waiting for. This level was the one that wasn't tapped into. Remember what was this? FOMC, non-farm. I can't remember. No, FOMC it was seven o'clock. So, um. So, yeah, it was like that first push off left this guy sitting up there. And it's, on the day, we've used each one of these buy sides and sell side. And then finally on that run yesterday, we got up there, right? So I'm like, right, that's done. Now we should sell off again. Where are we going to go to? We can go to this buy side. For me, that's the that's done. We can come off of here. We could go a little bit deeper into this pool. Um, there is one further below it that can't be ignored again. That would have been a big push up. Uh, this huge push up, actually, that never really got tapped into in its entirety. So that's near, but not, but not necessarily today. For me, today it's about this level we're in now, unless it's going to go on a crazy sell side run. But I'm happy that I managed to get a couple of entries down to it. Um, yeah, given the. Given what it's been doing this morning is not surprising. But look at what we get on the New York Open, though. Like London, Globex, just like casually going down, going, going down. As soon as we got into kind of like one o'clock. Um, this is my time. I feel like this is my time. What's going on? It is my time. Sorry. Uh, as soon as we got into kind of eight o'clock, that's when we kind of started doing these pullbacks and then look at this manipulation. That's the, that is hard to get in there. But as soon as you've got these sell sides, that's where it stops. That's where it reverses and that's where it comes down. Right. Quick look at these. I don't think I've got anything on here apart from INDO. So I'm not going to hang around all day for INDO, but we will see where it is at. Um, okay. So it's, at that top benchmark, really, there's 468 here. It's getting a bit messy, messy up here. I'd much rather a punch up to $5.30, $5.20. But anywhere up here, it can kind of play that game. 470. But I don't, I don't think this is over yet for it. I mean, I'd literally be drawing in a sell side pull. It's most recent buy side pull, sorry. And I would want to get it in alignment. So we'll see if it continues today, but I'm thinking, I am thinking this buy side pull, if we hold by the time, yes, yeah, so see these moving averages, by the time we kind of get up there, 
that would be nice. If we can come down, pull into around 370, 360, and the moving averages are there, I think that would be nice for a final push for the day. Might not get it, but that's how I'd want to play that. If not, if we continue to push on like a little consolidation push and we get that momentum off of these moving averages, if they continue to hold up, then we will look for some rejection up here. I'd much rather around the fives, all right? But the bogey level is sitting there at about four and a half, 460, 470. Um, that's it. Everything else we've done in the pre-market has played out. I think NXPL, yeah, beautiful, done. Sell-side liquidity pool didn't even come back for another one. It just held up look, all the way down to 190 from 260. Beautiful. CNXA is the one that's kind of going against the grain from what we said this morning. Didn't do the same. Um, it's pushed above its benchmark. Um, but what we did say was if it fails this first sell side liquidity, then be careful because if it fails this one, it's more likely to fail this one at 127. Um, so CNXA, yeah, not too not too keen on really. Wow, is NQ still coming down? That's that's I've got serious volume coming off the tape in my ear right now. One second. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Deep coming into that level now. So deeper down. But not to worry about there being more money left on the table. That's nice. Six hundred dollar day um on the NQs. PMXD, PXMD, benchmark two, straight into come off, sell side liquidity pull, gap down there. This is buy side, not red. Target down there at 70 cents if you like it. Didn't didn't take this one because uh well that probably has got, yeah, she's got 30 cents on it right now if it can if it can do it. Um just uh yeah for now I've just break the trend line. I think we'll keep you good on that trade if we get there. So PMXD down the short there from uh, kind of just under a dollar should confirm. LLR. Um, yeah, that was a beautiful one. Up into sell side liquidity on the open, predicted from the pre-market analysis and dropped down into the target 305, a little bit lower now at 291. That's it, guys. I am done and out of here. Wilson, thanks, mate. Hope you had a profitable day and I'll catch you up later. Um, everyone else, I'll see you back Monday. Uh, be on the Trade the Pool live stream on Monday and I'll see you then. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.